uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique in Learned Vinci V style. Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and it's time for another installment in our Exploring Colors series. And today, why you guessed it, today's color is brown. All of the colors you see here before me on the table are different kinds of brown. Now, brown is obviously a very easy to recognize color. It's all around us. Uh, obviously, brown hair, brown eyes, both very common. The color of dirt and the earth. It's a very common color we see. So it's very comfortable to our eyes. However, uh, there is, of course, the question of how in paint do we get the color brown? Well, it's a good question. So color mixing off of the traditional spectrum, this is actually how you get brown. Now your television doesn't use this exact thing, it uses actually more red and green. But traditionally you use red and yellow to make orange and then add black to get brown. So in essence, all browns are derivative of something in this spectrum of red, yellow, or orange effectively being, because of the black, highly desaturated or shaded oranges. Now, if you have a lot more red in the mix, you get a more red-brown. If you have a lot more yellow, you get a more yellow-brown, less black, so on and so forth. That's how we get a lot of different tones. So when we're talking about mixing these for paints, oftentimes those are the kinds of pigments we tend to be mixing. But, of course, there are also brown pigments that exist in the world. And brown pigment has a long and storied history. So we're not necessarily mixing them on a computer by using red and yellow and black. In paints, we oftentimes have real brown pigments. Uh, some of the oldest in the world are, are umbers. Uh, and so, in fact, raw umber dates back something like to... 40,000, 45,000 years people were using uh, raw umber pigment, and indeed it has remained popular to this day. Burnt umber is, of course, just uh, literally raw umber that has been heated and quite literally burnt. Uh, so it, it dehydrates the iron oxides and changes them to, uh, partially at least, to the more reddish hematite. Uh, both oil and watercolor paints use burnt umbers of all kind, and umber is named uh, for Umbria, where the pigment was originally sourced. And lots of pigments are named like that. Brown, so sienna you might have seen at a lot of colors, or sepia. A lot of these things are named off of the uh, either regions that they were the pigment was found in, or their original users. Uh, so things like Van Dyke Brown, for example, is named after the artist who popularized that particular brown pigment. Uh, in its original mixture, it actually contained a lot of raw earth, real organic material, uh, being mixed into the, the paint. Uh, that's why, where we got Van Dyke Brown. If you're a fan of Bob Ross, you've undoubtedly heard uh, of a paint like that. But there are lots of sources uh, where we get brown paints now these days. For our miniature paints, we tend to use a more simple range of pigments. Uh, oil paints and things like that will use a wider and more expensive range of pigments. Uh, but in either case, the important part about the brown is how it's tinted, right? So is there more red influencing the color, in which case you get a red brown? Is there much more yellow or maybe even white influencing the color? Buff is technically a shade of brown. I know that seems strange. Most of us would probably call this white uh, or at least something like that. But this is, in fact, a shade of brown uh, and so on and so forth. The more orange browns, right? So here, this brown glaze from more colors, very clearly still heavily influenced by uh, the orange and understanding the true color of your brown can help a lot when you're deploying it uh, in your painting. And indeed, it has been used as painting and just as a general color for a long time. Uh, one of the challenges with brown is that it kind of has this association of being boring. And that's mainly because visually it, you know, as a paint, it kind of is. Now, I, there's nothing, of course, wrong with using the color in your painting.
Um, lots of Renaissance artists used brown to create contrast and to create really striking visual imagery. So there's certainly nothing at all wrong with deploying brown as a color in your projects. But you do need to understand that it is neutral. And so because it's a fairly neutral color, just like white or gray or any of those neutral-ish tones, when I say uh, I'm using the word color here a bit incorrectly, I understand it doesn't occur on this thing, right? It's not a color in this sense. Uh, but anytime you're using those neutral tones, you need to understand that you're going to need to contrast that in some way. You're gonna to need to create visual interest by having either high contrast, and that's how a lot of classic artists like Caravaggio and Van Dyck used it. They used the brown to set shadows, and then they would use uh, brighter colors to then create bright contrast. So oftentimes bright cream colors or things like that. Uh, one of the challenges with brown is that it continues to be kind of unpopular as far as paint colors go. Only about 1% of uh, the population in some surveys lists brown as their favorite color, so it doesn't rank very highly in that regard. Uh, and a lot of people said it was their least favorite color. Um, so it's just a rough color to, that can often be uh, to paint with because it tends to fall into the background. That being said, uh, certainly if it's good enough for Caravaggio and Van Dyck and other you know, true old masters, well, then it's probably good enough for us as well. Um, so how do we use brown? Well, happily, our brown tones are actually some of the easiest colors to paint with. That's what's really nice about brown. Um, it looks really good, it's easy to blend, and so it's actually a great color to deploy whenever you need uh, to have areas of a miniature that are, you know, that have visual contrast and that have some kind of visual interest, but you don't want to overwhelm the piece. And that's really the power of a lot of these neutral tones in general, but brown first and foremost. That's why we often like to have belts and boots and things like that in the color brown, not just because, of course, in real life, that's often their color being leather, but also because it's just harmonious with the rest of the piece. If you have green leather, you could just as easily have green or blue leather belts or something like that. But that's obviously going to be much more disruptive to the overall color palette. So brown becomes a go-to in your work whenever you need a color that isn't going to disrupt everything else that you've already chosen. You know, you, you've chosen some blues and maybe some purples and things like that. And you don't want to pick another color. Something like brown can be your ultimate go-to because it feels very natural. And that's the last part I'll leave here before we get over to the painting. Putting browns into practice for your miniatures is actually very simple. Unlike many of the colors we've covered, browns don't require any kind of special pre-shading or undercoating work. They just basically cover. Light browns especially have a high level of opacity, but many dark browns in your standard miniature paint lines, things like rhinoxide, they cover quite well also. So they're very friendly to the newbie who might not be as confident yet with thinning paints. At the same time, darker browns, because they're often derivative of pigments that have either some orange influence or something like that, thin down to glazes or washes really well. And we all know this instinctively because one of the first things we discover in our miniature painting is usually Agrax Earthshade. And we've all put a little bit of liquid talent on our miniature and then been amazed at how the whole thing suddenly snaps into focus. You can do a lot of work with just a few browns. Uh, this painting that I'm doing here is just as a way of example, but I have basically four types of browns on my palette, covering a wide range of colors and different influences. And as I said previously in the leather video, which you can find linked up at the top right now, if you're going to use a lot of brown in your work, you wanna make sure that you use browns that are influenced by different tones. As I mentioned earlier, you can have browns that are red influenced, purple influenced, orange, yellow, etc. And in the wide world of miniature painting, there's even some that are crazier than that, green influenced and so on. And you want to make sure that you use these to create contrast, both dark and light, but also of hue. 
And so as you can see here, when I put the paints around, I made his skin a fairly light colored brown, brown sand to be specific. Whereas I'm using the wildwood contrast for the hair and the fur. Now I could have inverted those. I could have made the fur quite bright and the skin quite dark. But if you want to make sure that the piece stays visually interesting, you still want to be maintaining that movement from light to dark. Here I'm using buff on the horns and then I'm just going to pull some of the brown from that wet wildwood down into them to shade them. Just quick wet blending, nice and easy. And that's another great part about browns. They actually blend, especially wet blend, really, really well. So if that's something you're trying to learn, if you're working on building up your wet blending muscle, consider doing it with various shades of brown. They're very forgiving. They blend into each other well, and oftentimes will give a very smooth outcome that feels, again, very natural. So when you're working with brown paint, the key is you can kind of go nuts. It doesn't require much in the way of special work. It covers well, it covers smoothly. The challenge is actually in keeping the piece visually interesting. And as long as you remember to mix your browns, to create uh, a total piece that has the variation of both hue, i.e. color, and value, i.e. the amount of light, you can do really interesting things with just browns, much like you saw from the paintings of Caravaggio and others earlier in this video. So with that, I'll leave you with our little beast man here getting finished up and say, I hope you enjoyed this exploring colors brown. It is really a great color and very fun to paint with. I hope that this gave you some new ideas for how to use it in your pieces. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. I always answer every comment. Give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. And as always, we'll see you next time.